Hello everybody, Shrouded Hand here. When we hear the words torture chamber, we usually imagine some sort of medieval dungeon or maybe a dark cellar used by the secret police of some foreign dictatorship. But what if these places exist much closer to home, maybe operating right out of a scenic European village? To start this story, we have to go back to 2016 and the rise of a service called EncroChat. Marketed as a device for celebrities who feared their phones might get hacked, EncroChat provided people with specially modified phones where the microphone, camera and GPS were disabled. The handsets couldn't make calls, but they came preloaded with the EncroChat software. This was an encrypted messaging service that was very hard to intercept. As you can probably guess, the phone wasn't just popular with celebrities. It quickly became a favourite for organised criminals. Pretty soon EncroChat had tens of thousands of users, the majority of them being members of various crime gangs. In 2017, EncroChat came to the attention of French authorities when, after a number of organised criminals were arrested, the EncroChat devices were found in their possession. These phones proved extremely difficult to hack. They had a safety feature that, if the unlock screen passcode was entered incorrectly too many times, all the data on the phone would get erased. On top of that, all messages that were sent with the device were encrypted between users and no data was stored on any external servers. Despite the combined efforts of the French, Dutch and British police, it would take another three years before they were able to infiltrate the EncroChat messaging service. In April of 2020, police managed to put a technical device in place on the EncroChat's French servers. The exact nature of this technical device still seems to be a secret, but it enabled them to infect EncroChat phones with a malware that recorded messages before they were sent over the encrypted network. At that time, EncroChat had a reputation for being unhackable, and so criminal activities were being openly discussed over its messaging service without fear of being discovered. Police now had access to these messages, and it led to the takedown of many high-profile operations. In June of 2020, police raided multiple homes, warehouses and drug labs across the Netherlands, France, Sweden and the UK. The raids turned up mountains of illegal drugs, firearms and ammunition. Millions of pounds of cash were seized and hundreds of people were arrested, including, in the UK, two corrupt police officers. One of the most sinister things they found on the EncroChat messages was references among certain Dutch gang members to a place they referred to as the Treatment Room. One chat log contained the following message about the Treatment Room. Once I have him in the chair, we'll know more, but the dog is missing. Further messages contained references to nippers for fingers and toes, a set for nails, and a tub for waterboarding. These messages led police to a 40-year-old man named Robin Van O. A financial investigation linked Robin Van O to a warehouse in the Dutch village of Wouze Plantage. Wouze Plantage. When police raided this warehouse, they made their most disturbing discovery yet. Inside was a row of seven shipping containers. 
The containers were insulated, soundproofed, and lined with a reflective foil. There was a chemical toilet in the middle of each one. Handcuffs and chains were attached to the floor and ceiling. They were positioned in such a way that someone could be chained up in a standing position for long periods of time. In one of these rooms they found a number of police uniforms and bulletproof vests. The gang were planning to pose as police officers to kidnap their victims. In the seventh shipping container they found the treatment room. In the middle of this soundproof chamber was a dentist chair, modified with wrist and ankle restraints. Nearby they found a pile of household tools, pruning shears, loppers, branch saws, scalpels, pliers, a blowtorch, drill bits, hammers and screwdrivers. It was clear that these devices were intended to be used as torture implements. This room was also fitted with a video camera capable of streaming footage to a remote viewer. This has led some to speculate that the site was intended to be used as a red room. A red room, for those who don't know, is a fabled corner of the dark web in which people pay thousands of dollars to watch a live stream of someone being tortured and killed. Whether or not these red rooms really exist is a matter of debate and it's considered to be largely an urban legend. Most likely this room was intended to be used for interrogating rival drug dealers and gang members to extract information from them, the camera being used simply for surveillance. Either way, the idea of being strapped into this chair is a horrifying one. Luckily for the intended victims, when police intercepted the EncroChat messages, they were able to take them into hiding before they could be kidnapped. What I find scariest about this whole operation is how professional it all looks. Clearly they spent a lot of time and money building this place and it was intended to hold multiple prisoners for a long time. I've read about gangland tortures before but mostly they just take place in an empty abandoned warehouse or in somebody's house. This seems to be on a whole other level. It's a completely undocumented detention facility and torture chamber operating out of a small village in the Netherlands. It makes me wonder how many more of these sites exist around the world. Something tells me that this wasn't the only one to be built. So how many people have been abducted off the street by people posing as police officers and are now languishing in a cell like this, completely unknown to the authorities? It's a terrifying thought and it could be happening in your town right now. So that's pretty much all the information I've been able to gather about this case, so I'll just end the video here. As I say, I know that a lot of gang related kidnapping and torture goes on all the time, and I don't think I've really covered it on my channel before, but it was just something about this one that made it stick out. The level of organisation involved in building this site, something extra sinister about that, and that's why I wanted to make a video about it. So thanks for watching and thanks to everyone who is supporting the channel on Patreon and PayPal. It's much appreciated and I hope you're enjoying the content I'm putting out so far. And here's some more videos you might enjoy. Check them out if you're in the mood for more. Until next time, goodbye.